NBC7's Nightly Check-In is sponsored by Bill Howe Plumbing, Heating, and Air, Flood, and Restoration. We know how. There is outrage and frustration tonight after a grand jury decision not to charge Louisville officers with the death of Breonna Taylor. Large protests are forming across the country, including here in San Diego. Thank you for joining us for the nightly check in. I'm Catherine Garcia. Today, that grand jury indicted a former officer on three felony charges. Those charges accused Brett Hankinson of firing blindly into several apartments and recklessly endangering Breonna Taylor's neighbors, but he is not charged with firing at or killing Taylor. Hankison is one of three officers who fired shots the night Taylor was killed. Taylor's death, as you know, has sparked outrage across the nation since the incident six months ago. With today's decision, downtown Louisville is bracing for a night of protests. And in this moment, a moment of pain and anger for many, I have a message to the good people of Louisville. Let's turn to each other, not on each other, but a state of emergency has been declared for the area, and since the charges were announced, the situation has grown tense. We've learned also that two Louisville officers have been shot and taken to the hospital. Here in San Diego, a peaceful protest is happening downtown. We'll be staying on top of that situation. Make sure to head to NBC7.com for the latest updates and our news at 11. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg was honored during a private ceremony in the Great Hall of the Supreme Court today. Among the words that best describe Ruth, tough, brave, a fighter, a winner, but also thoughtful, careful, compassionate, honest. Ginsburg died Friday at the age of 87 at her home in Washington, D.C. after complications with pancreatic cancer. Throughout today, people lined up outside the steps of the Supreme Court to pay their respects and honor the American icon, many thanking her for fighting for gender equality and paving the way for women. The work that she's done is monumental, it's iconic, it's, it's changed the lives of millions of women. She's the reason I want to go to law school and she's the reason that I want to continue this fight. The public viewing will continue through tomorrow and then on Friday, Ginsburg Casket will be moved to the U.S. Capitol where she will become the first woman to ever lie in state. A look now at our latest local coronavirus numbers. 278 new cases were reported yesterday. Two more deaths also reported, bringing the total to 767. No new outbreaks were reported, so that makes for 13 in the past week. And the all-important metric for businesses, our county case rate remains at 6.9. That means San Diego just barely stays in the red tier. No new restrictions are taking effect for now. Despite that good news about no new restrictions, we're still learning about businesses who simply aren't able to recover. One family business in La Mesa that's been open for three generations is shutting down on Saturday. It was a very, very, very tough decision, but after such a tough year, it was a decision that had to be made. Corey's Closet Children's Resale has been a staple in the community since 1995. Owner Jody Valdez says they just haven't been able to recover during the pandemic. She says the government's plan to help small businesses didn't work for her. She says they needed rent relief, more opportunities that weren't just loans to get them through. Jody says if she does reopen in the future, it would probably be in a smaller space with a lower rent. We're pumping the brakes on gas-powered cars and trucks here in California. Governor Newsom signed an executive order that will phase out gasoline-powered cars by the year 2035. That means if you want to buy a new car in this state, it'll have to be electric. The governor's office says right now gas-powered cars and trucks are responsible for 50% of the state's greenhouse gas emissions. It's an effort to combat climate change that not everybody agrees with. It always has something to do with climate change, and, and yes, there is climate change, but uh, we're such a small fraction of the, of the Earth's, Earth's population, we can't do it all. Right now, electric cars run about ten dollars to $15,000 more than gas-powered vehicles. Today, we're learning why Los Angeles Chargers starting quarterback Tyrod Taylor suddenly missed last Sunday's game. It was awful. It was because of a team doctor accidentally puncturing his lung. According to reports, it happened when Taylor was being given a pain-killing injection for a rib injury. He left pregame warm-ups. He was taken to the hospital with chest pain, difficulty breathing. A typical recovery is about four to six weeks of no strenuous activity. Getting his starting job back may now be in jeopardy. So warmer temperatures today, bit of a cool down for the weekend. We'll check in with Dagmar for your Thursday forecast after this quick break. 
NBC7's Nightly Check-In is sponsored by Bill Howe Plumbing, Heating, and Air, Flood, and Restoration. Call 1-800-BILL-HOWE. Bill Howe. We know how. Bill Howe is a family-run company that is as diverse as their services. Promotes employees from within and gives back generously to the San Diego community. I am Bill Howe. I am Bill Howe. We are Bill Howe. We are Bill Howe. Because, because we, we know, know how. how. For your Thursday, you'll notice the temperatures will still be on the warmer side. So Wednesday was uh, a heat spike, a bump in those temperatures. Thursday close, but uh, maybe one or two degrees cooler. Still seeing the coast in the upper 70s. The inland valleys will be right around the mid to the upper 80s. So a little bit cooler now across most of San Diego from the beaches through to those um, desert slopes. Seeing the mountains at about that low to mid 80 mark and seeing the desert still at around the 104 and 5 mark. So still feeling fairly comfortable. Not bad as we head into the weekend. So Enjoy your Thursday. It's going to be a nice one. Well, it's pretty difficult to forget the images of the recent wildfire here, but even though the skies are looking a little better, they're back to blue, you could still be breathing that bad air where you least expect it. HVAC service techs we spoke to today suggest switching out your AC air filter twice a year, but that rule doesn't apply if we have wildfires. One air filter, this one in particular, was installed in July at a Santee home close to where the Valley Fire burns, so it's not looking so great. Even if you don't live in the East County, techs say we've had bad air quality for days and we think you should check your filters. They say check them anyway, quarterly. It can be pretty shocking. Um, again, this is not a normal situation, three months of usage. And again, this was pulled out of a home in East County where they did have a lot of the uh, the smoke in the air. Um, again, I would see something, you know, six to eight months, but this was literally three months and it's already loaded to the point where it's going to be presenting a problem. Plus, we had an unseasonably warm spring, which meant that more folks started using more air conditioning earlier. That was before, of course, we even saw the first wildfire. One of London's biggest train stations has brought in robots they say can kill the coronavirus with ultraviolet light in an effort to make people more confident in those travel hubs. St. Pancras International train station said the robots use the light to sweep large areas without the need for chemical disinfectants. They had added the technology could kill nearly 100 percent of bacteria and viruses, including the coronavirus, on surfaces and in the surrounding air in minutes. That's going to do it for our nightly check-in. Have a good night.